There's always a tweet, and with the New York Times reporting that President Trump paid just $750 in federal income taxes in 2016 and 2017, and no federal income taxes whatsoever for 10 of the previous 15 years before that. His old statements are exposing some stunning hypocrisy, like this one from 2012. Trump blasting the American people, saying, quote, half of Americans don't pay income tax despite crippling government debt. Mind you, the average tax filer pays $12,000 a year, considerably more than the president has. Later that year, Trump attacked President Obama. He said, quote, Barack Obama, who wants to raise all our taxes, only pays 20.5% on 790K salary. Do as I say, not as I do. That year, Obama paid more than $162,000 in federal taxes. And in another attack on Obama, Trump says, quote, have we ever had a POTUS before Barack Obama who earned over one third of his income from foreign sources and paid taxes to another country? The Times reporting that as president, Trump has received more money from foreign sources than previously known. Trump also attacked billionaire Jeff Bezos multiple times. He accused him of using business losses at the Washington Post as a big tax shelter to screw the public, essentially. According to the Times, Trump took huge deductions, including $70,000 to take care of his hair, and also appeared to write off hundreds of thousands of dollars paying his daughter Ivanka as a consultant to the Trump Organization, even though she was employed as an employee of the Trump Organization. And then there's this, Trump bragging that he, quote, will pay more taxes in one year than you pay in your entire life. Again, while paying no taxes for 10 of 15 years. And he is flexing here. He's posing next to a tall stack of papers with the caption, signing a recent tax return isn't this ridiculous? President Trump is denying the New York Times report, calling it fake news. Joining me now, journalist and CNN political analyst Carl Bernstein with us. And Carl, I mean, just give us your reaction to what's really a bombshell report here. This is really the smoking gun of a pervasively criminal presidency. Uh, we have a president of the United States who is a grifter. His family are grifters. And this is the definitive evidence of it. But more grievous and grotesque and dangerous are the national security implications of uh, the New York Times report. Yeah, I think you have to go back to a statement by Eric Trump a while back that said, well, the son of the president, well, we don't rely on American banks. We have all the funding we need out of Russia. This once again points to the president's foreign entanglements for his own political purposes and his own financial good. This is an unraveling that we now need to do in the press and the Congress of the United States to find out just how great a national security threat to this country our president is, particularly in his dealings with Putin, with Erdogan of Turkey. What this report in the Times shows is the pervasive uh, ability of these countries to hold the president up. And as a former national security director, um, pardon me, director of national intelligence, Dan Coates said recently, he believes that Putin has something on Trump. And we need to follow all of these leads now to see where it really takes us. Follow the money, follow the lies. Yeah, he owes a lot of money, and it's very unclear to whom he owes that money. This report, though, just very much shatters something that had been tarnished already, which was Trump's image as a successful billionaire tycoon. You did use the word criminal. So when you look at this, is this, I know that I know you believe that this is very much a con that we're seeing play out uh, in this report, but you also think it's a crime? Explain that. Well, I, there's certainly implications of tax fraud to, be, to begin with uh, that needs to be looked at and, and will be looked at. But again, the question of what other obligations does he have? For instance, he has put up people in his hotels from these foreign countries. The sources of his income are unknown, but they have to do with favors he has possibly granted to foreign entities. That's suggested time and again in the uh, New York Times report. This president needs to be thoroughly investigated in terms of how the United States has or may have been compromised by his actions, his selfishness, 
his putting his own interests, financial, in front of the interests of the United States. What this report proves, beyond a doubt, is what we have been reporting a long time, and that is he did not expect to win the 2016 election, that he wanted to improve his fi financial condition. He was underwater. That's what we see here. It has been a house of cards, his, the Trump organization. Uh, and, and he is hundreds of millions of do, uh, dollars in debt that he now must find a way to come up with this money. How can we have a president of the United States with these kinds of obligations? And it is time for the Republicans, especially in Congress, to say, wait a minute, we, we, we need to look at this. We can't blindly endorse this man uh, with what we now know about his tax situation about how he may have compromised our national security. This is a grievous, grievous, dangerous moment because of what is revealed in the New York Times reporting. He claims that it's fake news. He is also, though, accusing the New York Times of illegally obtaining the information and having only bad intent. I mean, if something is fake news, there wouldn't be something to be illegally obtained. And, P.S., we should mention that this wasn't illegally obtained. The New York Times is clear about that. What's your reaction to him kind of covering all of his bases here? He's always tried to make the conduct of the press the issue instead of his own conduct. And here he's doing it once again. Uh, but the fact remains the New York Times has done an, a remarkable public service by simply putting these returns and what they say out there. Uh, how they came by them is not the issue here. Uh, they say in their story that it came from people with legal LEGAL access to them. That's not the issue. The issue is Donald Trump and whether or not he has compromised the American people once again for his own financial gain and for his grifter family. This is, this is something unprecedented in our history. A president of the United States with all of these conflicts of interest who has not paid his taxes, has not revealed his taxes, and yet we see now that these taxes are the key to understanding his whole presidency. That's what this is. We now have a template to put over all of his actions as president of the United States, and that template is what is in these tax returns. And we need to know what do those actions as president look like? What are those phone calls? I gave her did a report about eight weeks ago about the president's phone calls with Putin, with Erdogan, with other authoritarian leaders, all of, all of them in places where he has financial interests. So now we've got a lot to go on. And it's time that the Congress of the United States, even at this late moment, not just the voters, take a look at the national security implications of this. And even if he leaves office, we still have the problem of a president of the United States with all that national security information uh, who is compromised. That's the problem. He is compromised to foreign entities. These reports and his tax returns certainly indicate. Let him show us how he's not compromised, if that's the case.